What's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new NanoPi Neo 4. So I test a lot of single board computers on this channel and this is the most powerful single board computer in its size class that I've ever tested. This thing is tiny. So if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know I've been doing a lot of these Rock Chip 3399 single board computer reviews. And there's good reasoning behind it. These are the only chips that all these manufacturers are putting in new single board computers, besides Odroid with the new H2, and I will have one of those very shortly, but that's x86 and not ARM. If you've been looking around at new single board computers, you know it's kind of stagnant. We have the RK3399, some all winter H6s, and that's pretty much it. We do need something that's affordable. We need something that has more power than the Raspberry Pi 3, but I don't think that the RK3399 is where it's at. Either way, we're going to take a look at the new Neo 4 and see how it performs. Here's a quick size comparison between the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and the new Nano Pi. I also threw in the new Raspberry Pi 3A Plus for good measure. And yeah, the Neo 4 is smaller than both of them, but I have a confession to make. If you want the Rockchip 3399 to perform well, you're going to need to keep it cool. So Nano Pi does make a heatsink. And as you can see, it's pretty massive. It's the same size as the board itself, you know, USB height. So when we put everything together, we got a pretty tall single board computer here. And if you want this chip to perform well, you're going to need this heatsink on there. And it wouldn't have hurt to add a fan either, because even with this heatsink, I have hit thermal throttle with it. What about pricing on a board like this? Well, the base cost is $45, but then we start adding on accessories like the heatsink, brings it up to $51. You also might want the proprietary eMMC module, bring it up to $63. And if you don't have a USB Type-C cable and a decent power supply, you might want to add that in too. By the end, you're at $72. Now you could get away with no heat sink. You could find something laying around the house. You could get away with no power supply. You can find those all over the place but you might want this eMMC module because as of making this video, you will need the eMMC module to run Android. It will not run from a micro SD card yet. So the setup I have here, the NanoPi Neo 4, the heatsink, power supply, 16 gigabyte eMMC module, and it does come with your Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antenna. Everything you see here will run you $72 from the Friendly Arm website. Now it's time to dive into the specs. I'm sure I'm going to leave some stuff out here, so if you want to find out the full spec list, go ahead and check out Friendly Arms website. Link is in the description. First up, CPU. We have a 64-bit, 6-core, Rockchip RK3399, two Cortex-A72 cores at 1.8 GHz, and four Cortex-A53 cores at 1.4 GHz. As for RAM, the Neo 4 only comes with 1 GB DDR3 1866 MHz RAM. If you want a little more, they do offer the NanoPi M4. You can get it in 2 or 4 gigabytes. I really wish they would have slapped another gig in here. This would be an amazing little board with 2 gigabytes of RAM. I did run into a few issues running Android where a couple apps ran out of memory. The board is normally powered by the USB Type-C port. It does power and on-the-go storage, but you can power this from some GPIO pins if you really want to. Gigabit Ethernet. One four-lane MIPI CSI camera connector. It will do 13 megapixels. Two USB 3.0 ports, and there's also two USB 2.0 headers on the board, so if you want to add two more USBs to this thing, it's very easy to do so. 40 GPIO pins. Now, it's not laid out exactly the same as the Raspberry Pi. This board is just too small to put it like that. And another cool thing that Friendly Arms has been doing on most of their new boards is giving support for PCIe X2 through the GPIO. Now you need the correct adapter for this to work, but you can add external SSDs and other PCIe peripherals. There is a proprietary eMMC socket on the board, and like I mentioned, if you want to run Android as of making this video, you will need an eMMC module. Full-size HDMI 2.0 port. It will do 4K 60Hz. Now that doesn't mean that every single video codec is going to do 4K 60fps, but the CPU is capable of handling some formats at 4K 60fps. Operating system choices. We have Android 7, Android 8, Lubuntu, Armbian, Friendly Desktop, and Friendly Core. Now there may be more coming down the road, but that's what we have right now. 
and I've said this in other reviews that I've done on this RK3399 board. Running a Linux desktop on here is not fun. It's not a great experience. There's a lot of tweaking you need to do to get it up and running correctly. These are great for headless systems, but until Rockchip puts out the correct drivers, we don't have full acceleration on the desktop in most operating systems except for Android. And finally, another shortcut they took on this board to make it a little cheaper than the others was not adding AC Wi-Fi. So we only have 802.11bgn and Bluetooth 4.0. So with the specs out of the way, let's get on to some testing. I have run some benchmarks and I'm going to face off against some other RK3399 boards that I've tested in the past, plus the Asus Tinker board. And since we're doing Android here, might as well throw in the Nvidia Shield. It's very unfortunate that we just don't have a good option for a Linux desktop on the RK3399. I've tested everything and the closest thing that I can get to having a really nice experience is Armbian and even then they got some work to do. I think they'll be the first ones to get to it but it's a little ways off. Alright so here's the Neo4 running Android. It's pretty much stock but they did throw a few extras in here like the GPIO tests. And we do have full access to Google Play. Now some things will not install, they're just not compatible with this. But one thing holding this board back, at least running Android, is this one gigabyte of RAM. As you can see, we only have 452 megabytes free. And I did have a couple apps crash due to not enough memory. Here's that Mali T860 four core GPU. It will do OpenGL 3.2. And even though there is an Android 8 build for this, I went with the 7.1.2 because it seemed a little more stable. So the first thing I always do out of the box is run some benchmarks. This is Geekbench 4, single core score. At the very top we have the Neo 4, followed by the NanoPi M4, which is pretty much this same board here. It's a little bigger with 2 or 4 gigabytes of RAM. The RockPi 4, which is another RK3399 board I recently reviewed. Tinkerboard, and because we're on Android, I can't leave out the NVIDIA Shield TV. Here's the Geekbench Multi-Core. Now if we take a look at the Neo 4 versus the Rock Pi 4, they're not far off from each other, but the M4 does jump ahead quite a bit. Now these are low scores, so every little bit helps. Taking a look at some GPU benchmarks, this is GFX Bench T-Rex on screen. This is using OpenGL 2.0. Unfortunately, the Tinkerboard did not finish, and the Neo 4 is coming in kind of low. This is actually one of the lowest scores that I've got with these Rockchip 3399 boards. Next, we have a 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark. Now, if we take a look at all of these boards, they're relatively low compared to the Shield, or compared to any modern smartphone. And the final benchmark I ran was 3D Mark iStorm Extreme. When you run the Extreme version on the Shield, it just says maxed out when it's done. And it looks like the NanoPi M4 pulled ahead by quite a bit. Now these are still relatively low scores compared to some newer devices out there, but I still wanted to run this just to see where the Neo 4 fell. Moving over to some real world testing, I wanted to go ahead and get YouTube out of the way. We cannot access 4K content on this, at least using the stock YouTube app that you download from Google Play. But if you wanna do some 1080p 60 FPS playback, it's going to handle it just fine, even over a 2.4 gigahertz network. Native Android Gaming seems to run Asphalt 9 pretty well, except for the fact that I did have two crashes with this game, and I think it was due to only having one gigabyte of RAM. But once you get it up and running, it does handle the game fairly well. I always like to test Minecraft on these little boards. This is all set at stock, so I believe the rendering distance is set to 8 chunks. I haven't messed around with any of the settings. I can tell you right now, if you start increasing that distance, you're going to run into a little more stuttering than we're seeing here. And there is stuttering. Every once in a while, I really notice it. Overall, it runs pretty good. I didn't have any crashing issues due to the amount of RAM I have in this thing. So Minecraft is definitely playable on the Neo 4.
And finally, I wanted to test out a little bit of emulation. This is Dreamcast Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I am using the standalone version of Raycast. I also tried it in RetroArch. Seems to run better here, but that's not saying much because we're only at 30 FPS. And the stutter is pretty much constant. I usually do native 4K video playback testing when I do single board computer reviews because a lot of these manufacturers claim it can do 4K 60fps. Yes it can, with certain codecs, but I don't think that the 3399 is a great choice for 4K video playback. I would kind of write it off as an option. I would go and get an Nvidia Shield or invest a little more money and buy an Intel NUC. To tell you the truth, I don't think the RK3399 is a good chip in the first place. It's been out for a while, nothing much has happened with it. I'm getting the same benchmark scores, same performance as I was a year and a half ago today. So if I was you, I would stay away from the RK3399 unless you absolutely have to have something. Yes, it is more powerful than the Raspberry Pi, but the Pi has that community behind it. And even if tons of people bought this, I don't think we're going to get to that point with the RK3399. It's already been out for so long, and a lot of people have just kind of overlooked it. Really appreciate you guys watching. I will have one more video coming up very shortly on this chip here. I got a lot of boards that I kind of want to benchmark out. I want to talk a lot more about this. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.